What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Are you mocking me? Oh, and Lucy's here. <laughs> no, a I'm lot not just happened you. in that in that opening. <laughs> You're bobbing your head on the other side. I'm of a the head table. bobber. What the we're fuck can I say? <laughs> <laughs> no, why would I mock uh, the woman who I love and who had us watch Ghost Ship? <laughs> the one who made you watch Ghost Ship. I had no say in this. Guys, you called for Ghost Ship. You like you you rallied for Ghost Ship. I got so many emails of people wanting Ghost Ship. And I went out to lunch the other weekend with one of my best friends. We're talking childhood best friends. And she said, "You know what movie you guys should do is Ghost Ship." So damn it, we're gonna we're doing Ghost Ship we're this week. We're doing Ghost Ship. And wow, um, kind of a turd, huh? Uh, yeah, I didn't hate it at first, I, and then just same. Kind of... I didn't hate it at first, mm -hmm. and then I really hated it. <laughs> I, I don't even think I really hate. It. I was just like, oh, all right, yeah. this was this failed. <laughs> Um, uh, enjoy yeah. this podcast review if you like this movie. This is not going to get kill counted ever. Because Too many damn people. Although, okay, so I had never seen this movie, but I had seen that opening part. That's the only thing I'd seen, too. Yeah, so I saw that, and when I saw that, I was like, never going to get kill counted. Then we watch it, and after that scene ends, I'm like, actually, it's doable. There was an overhead shot where I could frame by frame and go through it, but then the swimming pool scene mm. and, and like the flashbacks with where the it's crazy people running fucking around music. In the yeah, oh, yeah, that that part, I that was like, music, never mind. Nope. Which is like not Moby. The, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, like someone yeah. talking like this da, 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 over an electronic kind yeah. of. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And I love Moby. I'm a sucker for anything that's someone talking talking like this and they keep talking like this no, you sound kind of like stuff. cake though no you're i think you're hearing no it i, I know your what you're head. talking about yeah because uh i'm thinking of that south <laughs> side song look up the soundtrack for this if you can all i know I, is mud uh, we know mud vein is in it, it and that's good enough for me yeah there's oh. a pretty sweet mud vein song we're played. recording this one at night again by the way so one we're both loopy because it's nighttime and two uh this is lucy's playtime so she's gonna be all over the table in this episode that's okay hot mess episode this let's just fucking loopy. talk about this movie yeah uh, so <laughs> came out in 2002, um, was destroyed at the box office, apparently, by Jackass the Movie. I'll tell you which one of these two I saw in theaters. Jackass the Movie, it hell yeah. It wasn't Ghost Ship. I don't think, no, I don't think I would have been allowed to see Jackass in theaters. I remember that watching that first episode of Jackass when it aired on MTV and my life was changed. Yeah, you you saw that intro that says, don't try this at home. And, and you I were ignored like, no, that shit. Fuck that shit. Yep, and hopefully those videos never come out online <laughs> of the stuff that I've done. Yeah. I've seen some of those. Yeah. <laughs> the smoke bomb one. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> I love Jackass, by the way, unironically. I think it's a wonder. I, I don't know. I think because I came of age during the 2000s, that maybe my taste is a little skewed. <laughs> yeah. It just reminds me of being up late at my friend's house where I don't know if her parents gave a shit that we were watching stuff like Jackass. And you know, having it on during sleepovers. Just that and opening stuff. guitar. Yeah, wow, that. Wow, 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 wow. It makes me feel like it's three in the morning, and mm -hmm. after this, there's gonna be a block of music videos on MTV. And girls gone wild. And the girls gone wild infomercial. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so directed by Steve Beck, who did illustrious career of of this and Thirteen Ghosts, that's and that's it. it. <laughs> I think he did visual effects on some shit. Yeah, he did as visual as effects on goes. the Abyss, which not bad. I, you know what? He probably used that that expertise to do this movie. I wonder if he basically. I feel like working on the Abyss is just that's a college course on how water to get yelled effects. At by James Cameron. Oh, well, yeah, yeah and how to that. get yelled at by t film tyrant James Cameron. <laughs> <sighs> Guy who's been down to the bottom of the ocean. Hell yeah, he is. I still maintain that anyone could do that if they had enough money. Yeah, but most people don't. I'm just saying it's He's not that impressive. He's the only one who has. It's it, fucking cool. It's not that impressive. Bill Gates hasn't been down there. He's got the money. 
he just I don't know he doesn't feel like it but I'm saying if he wanted to he could he could but he hasn't <laughs> and that's what's cool about it uh produced by Joel Silver who you mentioned that that name sounded familiar Those it sounds predator familiar movies. to me too yep, yep predator movies and yeah lethal weapon matrix um yep then we've got Robert Zemeckis producing, which that was a paycheck, I think. Yeah. I don't know if he had anything to do with this. Maybe he had to do with the weird looking CGI people when their yes. faces morph. Yes. Ugh. He came in. When was Polar Express? I think that was a few years after this. Yeah, that was probably mid to mid. I don't know, 2005. Maybe he was know. perfecting his CGI <laughs> people techniques. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'll give you some insider tips. <laughs> Joel Silver. And then we've got Susan Levin, who is Robert Downey Jr.'s wife. Oh, who she I didn't know that. she was co-president of Dark Castle, which also did um, the Predator. Current wife of his? Yep, she's now um, Susan Downey. Oh, yeah. How long have they been married? Uh, I don't know, a while. That's cool. Definitely pre Iron Man. I think so. Yeah. All right. They've been together for a while because nice. they have a production company together cool and a bunch of kitty cats i was watching a tour of their house which i wouldn't have watched otherwise unless i saw that joey cliff had posted it and said it's worth watching for the cats and it was cool they have a whole wing of their house that their cats live in it's amazing that's what rich people do (laughs) (laughs) written by mark hanlon um i didn't see mark hanlon and john pogue who don't really have any other film credits i think they just kind of wrote this Mm. so yep they All got right. a movie made. Let's Good get into them. the let's get into the plot. We yeah. can we'll talk the cast as we go through because this has a weird these cast of characters. Weird cast. For it's this. mostly like I mean I guess Gabriel Byrne's a pretty big name. He was an usual suspect. Juliana so Margulis like, is is doing well for herself. I sorry I'm drinking a mountain uh a Baja Blast slushy from Taco Bell. What is she? You said she's good wife. She's the good wife. Yeah. She's the titular good wife. Uh, well, that was wife. after this, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that show just ended, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like at the time, n- these people were nothing. Uh, and since... Gabriel Byrne, I think, was... Yeah, Gabriel Byrne was the only exception. Carl Urban, well... I think this was right this before would've it would have been, been. Yeah, because uh, Two wh- Towers... What is he? Aeromir? Aomer. Aom- he is Aomer. the brother of Aowen and the nephew, nephew of, of Theoden. And who was getting Grima worm tongued uh-huh. by Chucky? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, by yeah by Chucky himself. Mm-hmm. At first, I thought we put in the wrong movie, or yeah. that we, or that Netflix or wherever we watched it was messed up because it starts. You see, you see a ship and it's an ocean liner, but the opening credit spot is bright pink and it looks yeah. like the fucking marvelous Miss Maisel font <laughs> that's on all the billboards and stuff. That kind of. Um, it's like down uh, with love style six like early 60s font it's like looping kind of cursive almost curls it's not yeah, curls curl- mt but it's close <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so we thought we had the wrong movie in because there is another movie that's a 50s movie called ghost ship so i thought we were watching that on accident <laughs> But no it, it's it's the movie where you're watching the right thing it it feels like a movie where Renee Zellweger is going to show up. No. That's the kind of vibe I get. I think maybe I was thinking of... Huh? The year is right. I was thinking of Down With Love, kind of. But it's that... Yeah, it's very strange. It almost feels like you're about to start watching a rom-com. So we're watching a... It's a ball, like a... It's a dance. Fancy party. It's a fancy party on this cruise liner. It's very Titanic, but set in the... 50s and it's italian yeah and it's all italian people it's an italian <laughs> cruise liner um in 1962, 1962. cruising through the ocean yeah and then, uh yeah there are people giving kind of weird looks to each other like the waiters and stuff and i was like yeah. i don't know what's going on here we find out later they're all they're all murder they're all in on whatever, whatever happens the at the fuck end of is this happening there you guys there's like stacks and layers of betrayal there were, it, it is like an it's onion absurd. of just it's like a key and peel sketch honestly with it, how many people yes, betrayed each other it feels like a parody of the 
ending of Reservoir Dogs or something like it, you know, yeah. where it's just remember, betrayal remember that, and betrayal. Uh, we, we have friends who did sketch comedy for a yes, while. Yes, that's exactly. I, that's Lemonade exactly Stand right. uh, yeah. was, uh, or no, I'm sorry. This this was uh, Zamboni Grenades. Yes, sketch, it was. And it was about like betrayal. And you and I played Cersei and Littlefinger in it. Yeah, because their whole sketch. It's so funny. If it's all, it, it is online. online. I okay, watched we'll it link, recently, we'll link to actually, it then. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me to link to that. But it's a sketch where, yeah, it starts off as a movie and it's people all pulling their guns on each other and then it just keeps like it's almost like a fractal that just goes <laughs> out from there to like the point where it's basically the whole universe all just turning guns on each other yeah it's very that's funny, what the end of this that's fucking the end movie of this is, is. Dude, it's insane and by the way i know we're gonna have ghost ship fans like purists because oh, yeah. there's purists for every movie i've learned do you mean apologists sure <laughs> but i mean i just mean people who weren't I have no idea what the fuck happened at the end of this because it's oh. very confusing and I'm going to try and explain it uh, and yeah, get I have it wrong. A decent idea, but no, I'll Kind of like wrong. Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle, oh, I had God. no idea. Well, that one you have to watch the prequel yeah, that do came I out have, two do years later. Do I have later to watch the prequel to, to go that. shift fuck to understand? Fuck all of you who told us, oh, no, you have to watch the prequel to understand. Movies shouldn't work like that. No, that's... I like the idea of there being a ghost ship prequel, though. That will explain. That explains. That makes it fucking make sense. Yeah. Sure. Give that. Uh. Give that guy from Dexter some work. <laughs> now that that show's over. Uh huh. So we see that there is a a wire. Yep. Um. Kind of. It's strung up kind of around this ball area, which is on the deck of the ship. And this is, yeah, this is the scene everyone talks about when yeah, they talk about this movie because it's the best scene. The wire gets tight and it cuts everyone in half. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the wire gets like pulled taut and then snapped and it just slices everyone in half. Except for uh, Emily Browning, who's like a 14-year-old here. Uh, even yeah. though, what the fuck? That makes no sense. Everyone's getting cut in half at the waist. She's not thigh high. But the, she's standing next. She's dancing with the captain or, uh, some or is it her dad? No, no, I, no she a, said her parents died. It's, yeah, it's, like it's just some... No, I don't think it's the captain. Oh, I think he's a little busy. Uh, pilot in the boat, oh. probably, but it's uh, just some worker, a okay. waiter or some shit. Oh, okay. A mate. Yeah, so they're they're slow dancing. It's cute. I, she's probably standing on top of his shoes, you know. Oh, I bet. And But <laughs> but she does not get sliced in half, but we see that the he guy... He got decapitated. He gets... Yeah, his head gets, like, chopped. So half. I don't know how this wire cut everyone around them in and half. And then went... Up. up to cut his head off and left her alive. Someone, if you want to draw me a diagram explaining, Please. I would appreciate it. Tweet at me at Caremax. Please C-R-E-B-E-C-C. explain this <laughs> shit. Because already we're not making we're, any goddamn no. sense. <laughs> <laughs> and then, boom, we flash forward to 2002, baby. And it is 2002. Hell yeah, with these haircuts. Um, not I don't know what's going on here because we're on a big tugboat and everyone's screaming at each other and there's lots of flares being lit and thrown around. Well, into they're the tugging ocean. a they're tugging a wreck that they mentioned. It took us a long time to get it off the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And there, yeah, that the good wife is uh, uh, disobeying orders. Oh my from, gosh, we have to call her the good wife <laughs> the whole time. The good wife is disobeying Gabriel Byrne and uh, going in there to like save it because it has a hole and she's going to patch it and she mm-hmm. saves it. And so they, they save this wreck. Yeah. So we, we learn that they are, sal- they're a salvage crew mm-hmm. because they say as much. And then Carl Urban says, here's to the fucking sea. They're at a bar. And he cheers. His, Man. He cheers us to the ocean. Here's to the fucking sea. So right? Carl Urban plays a dude named Munder. And then the blonde dude in here, Dodge, mm-hmm. who's played by Ron Eldard, who I don't know who the fuck that is. But Dodge and Munder are just idiots. 2002 bros. They are. Spencer's gifts. Is where we hang out. I feel so bad for Gabriel Byrne having to deal with these morons on his crew. <laughs> just like doing some weird comic routine. They're the Stu and Billy of the <laughs> of the tugboat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably also secret lovers. You know what? Yeah, because they are constantly teasing each other about being gay, bro. Oh yeah, there are a few. I'm not it's gay. It's 2002, in here. so there's all kinds of jokes about being gay. Could you imagine? <laughs> Do you imagine if these characters were gay? <laughs> <laughs> then there's a guy in this bar. I guess it's a, a sailor bar because it's it seems like it's off of of these docks. 
because in the background it might as well be dudes with fucking sailor hats on smoking corn cob pipes and shit like that's the kind of bar we're in just a shanty bar and this dude comes up to them who i don't know his name i just called Fairman. him i called him new guy in my notes you the whole did time. call him new guy the whole time he's he's from dexter so fair Des- played by desmond harrington who played quinn so he's he's Fairman. Ferry, ferryman. 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 Hi, Mr. Murphy. I'm Jack Ferryman. I was wondering if I could buy you a drink. So Ferryman comes up to them and says, hey, I know you're a salvage crew, and do I have the opportunity for you? And I just wrote that this is the, this is the boat equivalent of being in L.A. and seeing a famous director in a restaurant and then walking up to his table and pitching him your script. Yeah. That's exa- That's what this guy does, but it's the boat version of that. <laughs> he comes up and is like, all right, I, got, I, I fly helicopters. I didn't really catch what his job is, but he took overhead pictures of this wreck that he saw that is like, this could be a gold mine. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you the coordinates if you give me a cut. And he then also insists that he's going to go with them. Yeah, and Gabriel Byrne says, when the sea gives you an opportunity, you take it. Yeah, you know, like the old saying goes. The old saying goes. <laughs> so, yeah, these, I guess they're, yeah, they're, so they're a crew that salvages wrecks. I don't know the legality of yes, all this. Yes, we were debating if this is a legal. It sounds like they're, tr- they're like, tr- they, they nominally keep things above board. For yeah, the most part, because think- at one point, Isaiah Washington is like, I, I'm going to call the Coast Guard as per maritime law. Yeah. And they're I, like, no, I don't do that. I think they're pretty above board, because at first it seems like there may be a group of criminals. Yeah. And, but they, there's a lot of arguing about maritime law in this movie, which oh, yeah. I was not expecting for a horror film. I actually like all I that. Kinda like I kind of like all, all the, the debates stuff. about maritime they, law. Yeah, they use their nautical terms here, and I'm into it. They're, you know, they're not dumbing it down. They're talking about, like, yeah. the difficult difficulty of patching up a, a wreck i'm into to that the shit. script's credit and it wouldn't make sense for any of the characters to say you know it, it could make sense for for fairman to say it i don't think anyone ever says in english please definitely not we don't so get any of points that to go ship also that. i just realized that this is a uh maritime version of event horizon isn't that the yeah. plot of event horizon there's like a uh defunct spaceship that they go yes, that they go to and find like try and to like boot back up and like right. salvage but it's haunted by ghosts i think you're this is event it's horizon funny I, we like just watched that and that movie's so weird that i it's hard i don't to, even know if i remember what it's about it's a weird i just one, remember man. the end and how it turns into hellraiser <laughs> oh yeah it does <laughs> sam neil like man, without eyes or some shit that movie rules it's always fun when a director like paul ws anderson just has a fluke like that and makes something <laughs> fucking incredible what are you talking about he had uh uh alien vs predator <laughs> he had that more he had mortal Kombat. yeah oh that's true mm-hmm. that without is that a... movie we wouldn't have the song so wait really yeah oh i thought the song was just in the game no that song was for wow. that movie i took it for granted hell yeah you did wow i really really did mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah they go they're ahead to the boat oh man and there is some mud vein fuck playing. yeah the wow. uh so like the um fuck what would this position be called i don't know what crewman he, i don't know uh, yeah. the, uh, uh uh he's like the sh- he's like the i this this movie i realized i do not know boat terms because i think i wrote down pilot and then erased it and then driver and then erased it and i realized i have no idea what to call the person who steers the fucking boat yeah because you're not a pilot right i think you're a pilot really maybe his name is santos, santos all right he we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll just he talks to a name. picture of a car he talks to a, a framed picture of a car later multiple times it's 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 kind of like fucking uh who is it in uh deep blue sea is that ll uh, cool j oh with the bird yeah at least the, the bird, bird is alive that's true that's but it is very similar mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah lots of jokes about men in the navy being gay oh that's right everyone knows you navy boys take it up the ass direct <laughs> quote from Go ship. Who the fuck you kidding, Greer? Everybody knows you Navy boys take it up the ass. <laughs> the ship pilot, question mark. So uh, Santos is not getting anything on the radar, even though he knows there's supposed to be something here. It starts storming. They can't get anyone on the radio. And they almost run into the ghost ship. The ghost ship. 
They like have to yeah throw it all the stern and just uh it, like they do run into it but with their little tire bumper thing so it's a little okay yeah the whole tugboat's covered in tires yeah which is fun yeah. but i think it does damage their ship because aren't they talking about how they have to repair it and ship mm-hmm. yeah their their little tugboat is called the arctic warrior which sounds like a sporting clothes brand to me it does you know like arctic warrior underpants uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they realize it's the antonia grazza and Gabriel Byrne can't, he can't even. With <laughs> he the, can't even. He is like, it's so fucking beautiful. And he, this is like, it's like the Moby Dick for um, boat salvagers. So it's like a really specific. Yeah, like disappeared. It, it's known to have yes, disappeared. this ship just, it just disappeared and no one knows what happened to it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they found it uh, apparently... Uh, under as, maritime under law. maritime law as gabriel burns states it if you find it's finders keepers yeah if you find a boat it's yours makes let's go sense. looking for boats dude just yeah, kidding like, the ocean's fucking the ocean huge. is too scary to it's go big too and bad. scary man so they decide to go explore the ship which fuck that Fuck that. It's I'd just a it. giant pile of rust. Yeah, but, you know, it's a ghost ship. Yeah, but then you fall through the floor like someone does later. Yeah, it's, oh, someone. It's fucking Carl Urban, Carl and he's Urban like, don't let go. Yeah. It's an insane <laughs> de- delivery. <laughs> don't let go. It's fantastic. They all though. get in there, and, and a few of them start singing the theme to Love Boat, and Gabriel Burns, like, have some fucking respect. Yeah, this is when I was like, oh, God, these guys fucking I suck. Know. They are not. They're just cracking stop. wise. It's like hanging out with an improv group because they're constantly (laughs) doing bits and they're trying to one up each other nonstop and it's miserable. But for all our friends listening who are in, we don't mean you. Yeah, we don't. (laughs) (laughs) They find this, this grandfather clock that stops ticking. And then there's a clock jump scare because it starts ticking again. It's spooky. Super spooky. And they find a, a digital watch too. Like oh yeah, watch. they find a digital watch. They're like, that's not be right. There. 1962. Mm-hmm. And then someone, I think Gabriel Byrne's like, whatever, someone else was here. Fuck it. Yeah. Fair. I guess. I mean, if if you're in the world of this movie and you don't know you're in a horror movie, sure, like, okay, cool, someone else is here, whatever. Sure, I guess. <laughs> it's such a big ship. It's such a big it's ship huge, that yeah. it's terrifying. They should make a horror game like this. On where a you, ship? Where you like come across a ghost ship and have to explore it because it's such a big... I wonder if that exists. I don't know. It might just already exist. Makes me think of like Bioshock or something. Yeah. That would be kind of a creepy game. Mm-hmm. Like the t- like, like exploring the Titanic and that little yeah. submarine. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. Even just as a kid looking at pictures of the Titanic wreck freaked me out. For sure. Because it's, it's eerie. It is creepy because it's just it's it's objects you recognize, but then they're covered in like weird like rust and barnacles and oh it's so it's gross. gross. Yeah, dude. those pictures just like really freak me out a little bit. There's these blocks that they start kind of moving by themselves. They're like these oh, yeah. lettered blocks this and they spell welcome. There's a lot. There, there's a lot going on in ghost shit. They see Emily Browning staring at them. No, just the good wife does. Oh, the good wife sees her. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Emily Browning is like we said, the little, she's like a 14 year old. Yeah. And she's one of the, one of the people from the beginning. She's like the only kid on the ship and she was at the ball. So, yeah. and she is clearly a ghost cause she's just pristine, not dirty. She basically is wearing, one of the twins dresses from the shining yeah yeah and then uh gabriel byrne decides to tell them all a boat story um about another boat that was found with nothing in it but it had left with stuff in it and isn't that spooky what yeah he i don't know it's when they're all getting back to the tugboat and he's like guys did you know that sometimes boats leave for places with things in it Oh, the, the story of the boat that like ghost sailed its way into uh, yeah, the Mediterranean. Yeah, it arrived with no one. Yeah. Then who is boat? <laughs> yeah. Who is driving? I do like that we learn because uh, new guy asks Isaiah Washington, who's also in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't really know him. What, what was he in? Gray's. Yeah, that was like shit. what he was in for a while. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I thought I thought there were, it was funny. Some scenes in this, I thought he did really well, and then other scenes, I was like. Oh, he kind of hammered it up because there's a scene where he like yells uh, at everyone else 
when they're like things are getting bad and i was like oh that was really good and then the next scene he's like drinking from a, a wine bottle oh, man. he's given the dumbest stuff to do in this movie probably yeah it's, I, I don't think it's his fault <laughs> but he there we have a scene with him and new guy back on the tugboat while everyone else is exploring and new guy asks if gabriel Byrne and uh good wife are like a couple mm-hmm. and i like that it's like no he thinks of her as his daughter and that's it that's there's not like a forced yeah. romance in here at all i don't know why new guy is so obsessed with everyone else having a crush on good wife yeah because near the end he implies that the blonde dude he's so f- obsessed he's like, like you have everyone a wants crush to on... fuck her yeah let's all talk about it It'd be, yeah i don't know i think he maybe is looking for a way to leverage that relationship if he's like if I, he can find i think someone, you're giving the movie too much credit i probably am <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel Burns has the title go ship. Woo. Oh, yeah. We all cheer. <laughs> they all decide they're going to try and tugboat this fucking ocean liner back to shore. And hell yeah, to dude. emphasize, it is a huge It's boat. gigantic, but that means money. Money, 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 it's money. It's like a famous ghost ship. Hell yeah. Yeah. They can bring I it would, back. It's and... definitely not Titanic size. It's like, what's the other one that went out around the same time? Brit- Britannica. It had the three smokestacks instead of four, I think. Well, fun fact: in Titanic, only the fourth one is fake. It's a four. Yeah, it was uh, or it was an exhaust pipe over all, the kitchen. Hey, I had all the same Titanic books that you did growing up. Probably fun fact: if you were in grade school in the nineties, you were for some reason obsessed with the Titanic. Yeah, Go I mean it was a and- huge movie, but it's just weird that kids in school because of this romantic movie that for adults that came out were obsessed with a actual historical disaster that happened i don't know anyone who wasn't obsessed i was obsessed with the titanic yeah yeah that i forgot that fourth smokestack is fake yeah (laughs) and then it's weird thinking about how at at carnivals and stuff have you ever been on one of those inflatable titanic slides no do you ever think about those? I've been on one before. Really? Yeah, because we had we had a school That's carnival. Disrespectful. It is right because <laughs> well, we had a school carnival every year, and they would always get the Titanic slide. And as a kid, you don't think anything of it, but now thinking about it, it's that is a weird thing. That's it, weird. It might as well be like the Hindenburg, and you slide <laughs> down. Like I don't know. The, I just it kind of blows my mind that those are a thing. <laughs> I guess it would, we're far <laughs> enough away from it. I guess, but it's still <laughs> weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> then a uh, uh, new or good wife is finally tells the new guy, Fairman, that she definitely saw a little girl on the ship and that she she looked at her and. Uh, new guy because he flies planes he's like oh i i always think i'm seeing stuff when i'm flying planes so naturally we both assumed gremlins because little boats little boats little girls are to boats as gremlins gremlins are are to planes planes. yep Yep. that's (laughs) actual sat question remember that one for your your tests yeah your exams (laughs) They, uh, the crew goes scuba diving and they realize that the boat is sinking because it's it has one it has a hole in it and two it's stuck in this current yeah that that's like it's looping it around in a circle in the ocean and, and just, it's smashing up against rocks yeah or like it hadn't until this last time it looped around mm-hmm. uh because yeah at, at first they're like there's a hole in it and it's sinking and i was like well how's it still up then and they're like on the last pass by these rocks it must have scraped up against him i was like you got me there go yeah. ship all then right i think fairman is like oh did it hit um an iceberg and everyone's like <laughs> <laughs> that idiot. you fucking idiot you fucking land lubber lubber did it hit an iceberg or something <laughs> <laughs> no you don't need an iceberg to rupture a hole i don't know <laughs> They're going to try and patch this hole, damn it. They want their ship. Cause the it's hole patching money, scenes money, are money, cool. Money, money. I know. I kind of like those underwater scenes. Hey, that's the abyss stuff Oh yeah, coming into play here. There you go. Yeah. Then uh, more arguments about maritime law. Lots of talk about boats. Yeah, because uh, Isaiah Washington wants to call the Coast Guard. Mm-hmm. And Gabriel Byrne is like, no. I yeah, don't know why. Because No, I think it's just because... Which is weird if he's so confident in maritime law and the fact that this boat should be theirs. Why does he not want the Coast Guard to come? Because I think he's just like, the Coast Guard's going to complicate things. Yeah. So I don't want them to come oh, because they're going to try and take this boat away from me. Yeah. 
So just following maritime law when it suits you, huh, I Gabe? Guess so this is what makes me think they're a little shady. Yeah, they're not fully yeah above board. Well, I mean, I bet it's like a fucking uh, like a tow truck driver. I've been mm-hmm. friends with tow truck drivers. Mm-hmm. They go to some uh, lengths. Yeah, to tow their tow their vehicles. Yeah, dude, tow truck drivers and repo men yep yep i know some repo men yep know those people (laughs) um the the uh santos is down below deck is he in the kitchen i think he's i don't know where he is man i don't know i don't know boat i don't know boat stuff he's talking to a framed picture that at first we think maybe it's his girlfriend or wife or something but it's a car it's a car it's a framed picture of a car it's okay Hey, you hang in there, okay, Preciosa? Because someday he's going to find some other genius to fix his goddamn boat. Because he's trying to fix the tugboat so they can yeah, do this plan. Yeah, so they're, yeah. And I guess they, they're they like, we have to go make sure that there's no other damaged parts of the cruiser uh, and just make sure it's all on the up and up. So they spread out and start exploring, and Goodwife finds a pool. Yes, and this was also something I vaguely remembered from this, was the swimming pool, which made me think, have I seen this before? And I just don't. It might have been on it at a a sleepover or something. Yeah, but there are bullet holes in the walls of the pool, Mm -hmm. and then also in the floor, and then I what she like falls from the ladder because she gets... Uh, spooked by uh, Ghost Girl again, uh-huh. and she falls down and like hits her head and cuts her head, and her blood comes out of her head and and, and like goes <laughs> into... like the bullet hole takes it, yeah. and then when she gets out of the pool, the bullet holes in the sides of the pool start like leaking blood, and the bu- the the pool fills up with some CGI blood, but nobody notices because it's ghost blood. Uh-huh. I don't know, man. We're this movie's starting to get weird. Yeah, and there's there's dead people floating in the pool too. Yeah, Which is but nobody of, notices that yet. No one notices. Gabriel Byrne finds a really nasty captain's hat. This this oh, yeah. looks like yeah those those pictures of the Titanic wreck where there's clothes that are somehow preserved but they're all orange and weird that's mm-hmm. what this hat looks like it's so disgusting and we were just yelling at the tv like don't put it on don't do it <laughs> i kind of want him to though i know and like talk to himself in the mirror <laughs> like i i kept it <laughs> looking good today or, or or no lines just a silent salute to the mirror <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> he finds blood and in a sink in the captain's office and a razor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This movie is, um, it cuts back and forth between, because it's constantly, hey, gang, let's split up and go. So there's like five things up. going on at once. So my notes are doing a lot of back and forth. Isaiah Washington hears a woman singing in Italian. And and we saw the singer in the opening yes. uh, flashback scene from 1962. She's a voluptuous Italian lady. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Francesca. Francesca. And yeah, he hears her. And is this when he sees a picture of her and he's like, it's nice It's right titties. around here, yeah. He, yeah. Weird line. <laughs> he goes, Francesca. Nice, nice titties. titties. <laughs> Francesca. Nice titties. And then, but he has a fiance that he's talked about. And then like, he's like, feels guilty or something. And he's like, J- not nice. Not that you the future, hold a candle my to wife. my, fi- yeah. To no, he says to no one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. This guy's got issues. It just reminds me of being a kid and you think Santa's watching you and you do something <laughs> bad and you're like, oh, I didn't mean it. Yeah, so uh, uh, nice titties in a respectful way. Yeah, in I a mean. nice way. <laughs> just subjectively. <laughs> oh, and Gabriel Burns looking in the mirror um, in the captain's office, the reflection of the captain pops up. Ghost captain. Ghost captain. Ghost captain. Good wife opens a hatch and a ton of nasty water comes out and there's dead bodies coming yeah, they're out. Floating there's around dead, body dead body wa- water. Fuck. It's so gross. But then she immediately assesses that the bodies are a month or less old. I guess if they were older, they probably wouldn't be bodies anymore in they, water. Yeah, they wouldn't. They would just be disintegrated mush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, yeah, that's no, so gross. Yeah, these ones are fresh, Ugh. which is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I, I, because of the, we did the episode on John Carpenter, I just watched um, Big Trouble in Little China, and in that, there's a scene where they're swimming in dead body water, too. Oh. And I, it's just always... That is Poltergeist? A gr- yes. It's the grossest thing to me. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so nasty. Because, like, you imagine, like, if you were in a pool and someone pooped in it 
But like, well, if they were dead, <laughs> it'd be uh-huh. worse. Yeah. It'd be worse than poop water. <laughs> it'd be, it saying. would be worse than poop water. Mm-hmm. Good wife is like, all right, we gotta get the fuck out of here because there's some fresh dead bodies in here. So something's weird. So she grabs new guy and runs and new guy, they pass an old Jaguar, which makes him stop and go, oh my God, look, a Jaguar because priorities. And they go into this room where they think they see something moving. It's rats. And it's rats. They open up a a trunk and all these rats come out. Could rats even survive for that long on a ship floating around in the water? If there's bodies maybe to eat and then they would just what reproduce yeah. and stuff weird i feel like they could survive i bet they could yeah good old rats they're smart yeah they're smart Can but the rats are uh, uh there are also gold yes there's gold just a ton of fake they looking gold drawer, bars. yeah they, they see underneath all the rats there's gold <laughs> they look like willy wonka chocolate it bars. looks exactly like yeah, chocolate bars for sure. Mm-hmm. I love gold. <laughs> it's like very smooth and shiny. Maybe that's what gold looks like. Gold bars. Yeah. yeah, that's like what all the gold looks like at Fort Knox. Mm-hmm. Do they keep gold there? Yeah, that's what the whole thing is, right? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. But like, why bother? You know, Keeping for it. Uh, we're not on the gold heists. standards. You just gotta. You just you gotta just tempt have, you uh, just always, villains. Right. Yeah, to try to to pull heists. So it's like a rat motel kind of Fort Knox. Uh, like a like a roach motel? Or yeah, a roach motel. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. lure them in and then mm-hmm. get them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> That's the only reason they keep it there. Got it. Got it. They hear everyone starts hearing ghost voices over the walkie talkies. Good wife goes into a room where there's just blankets hanging up from the I don't know what this room is. It's like the room where they hang up sheets. <laughs> I don't know. The laundry room? But so it's so many sheets hanging up it's a big ship i guess a lot of linens carl urban and the blonde guy scared them oh both. that's right it's such a cheap jump oh scare. it's so dumb they run out like with flash there's a lot of cheap cheap yeah. scares in this yeah which i don't appreciate so now everyone's super pumped about the the gold bars oh yeah they're and, all licking their lips and gabriel Byrne, yeah estimates that it's worth 200 to 300 million dollars yes, because before he even brought that up we both were like, like well how, how much, much is, is this that? even worth like because really how much is gold worth i don't know i maybe truly this don't is know. right i don't know i don't know i'm not uh i'm not but what's his name to- uh oh uh, alan thick Hey guys, I want to take a break real quick to talk about our sponsor this week, Squarespace. Squarespace. So let's say you you uh, you want to start a job as a boat salvager, and you're looking for crew, or you're just looking to share your your finds. No, with- you don't share your finds. You get tips. You have like a tip oh, box yeah, where someone's true. like, find a wreck. Let me know. But if you find cool stuff you want to you want to show people, you brag about it. Because under maritime law, it's yours. Sure, okay. So you might as well brag about it. Yeah. You can set up a website for that with Squarespace. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you can set up a website to, to show off all those those pictures of the stuff that you've taken that is now lawfully yours under maritime law. Exactly. And you can also set up, yeah. I'm you good. could sell stuff if you wanted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. if that's legal. Uh, What? From the boat, from the boat perspective. Oh, okay. Because yeah, you can you can do store. You can stuff. D- you you can sell. It's totally legal to sell stuff you with your Squarespace promote, website. Yeah, you can promote <laughs> your business with Squarespace. That's one of the main points of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that's bullet point number four. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you can you can customize your website so it's different from all the other boat salvaging websites. Mm-hmm. You gotta differentiate yourself. Yeah, because there's a lot of boat yeah, salvaging. Yeah, James websites. Cameron has his own one. So. Oh man, yeah. If you want your website to be better than James. Cameron's use Squarespace. Yeah, that square doesn't use Squarespace. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy can like afford to make a pretty nice website. But not as good as one with Squarespace. That's the thing is like it's going to look like you spent a bunch of money on it, but you're not. Get Cameron quality <laughs> uh get Cameron quality websites for Beck prices. Beck Person? Scott Beck, the director of the movie oh, we're talking oh, about in this Beck episode. The, the, no, not I was like, I don't Beck the eccentric musician. The joke, but okay. <laughs> you can there's you can uh there's built-in search engine optimization. So if you have a lot of 
artifacts you want to show off, you can kind of categorize them. And there's a search engine so people nice. can look through them. That's good. And there's all kinds of extensions and stuff. So you can really make your website different. You can make it your own. Free and secure hosting. Nothing to patch or upgrade ever. And 24-7 customer support. Because sometimes, like, when, you know, you're, you're on your tugboat and you find a ghost ship, it's like 4 in the morning. Because you don't know when you're going to happen upon a ghost ship. Then you can you can call customer service if you have problems updating your site about it. I That's good. No, that <laughs> Assuming you have internet in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> so if you want to try out Squarespace, you can go to squarespace.com slash deadmeat and you'll get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you just use the offer code deadmeat to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Yeah. And, and also smash a champagne bottle against the wall when you launch your yeah, site. Yeah, not against your computer. No. <laughs> yeah. Although... No, they don't do tech support. The twenty four seven. No, no, no. That's like for the if website. you, if you that's mess up your computer, that's, that's on you. On you. Yeah. That's on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, that's squarespacecom slash deadmeat. Offer code deadmeat. You know how to spell it. Is the show. Yep. <laughs> All right, back to ghost ship. Go, 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 go ship. Yeah, but two hundred to three hundred million. That's a lot for a couple trunks of gold bars. That there seems... are a lot of trunks. I don't know, and it man. There was a lot of gold, man. I don't know. But the gold has the f- f- uh, tr- numbers, the gold yeah, numbers apparently filed off. Gold bars like that. I guess Fort Knox is stamping numbers into them. We're very or ignorant something. about gold, if you didn't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Why would we have to know anything about it? Us? Yeah. In case we run into a ghost ship <laughs> and we find a bunch of gold. We got to know how much it's worth, hon. They realize that it's stolen gold because all the numbers that would be on it or gone and they've been rubbed off or something like shaved off. And they think that that's the reason the ship maybe disappeared is something, 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 something to do fishy. With this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fishy. Okay. So they all realize they're going to be rich. Santos is talking to the frame picture of his car again and telling the car that they're all going to be rich. Cause he's still trying to fix the tugboat, but a canister of propane starts to, it's, on its yeah, own, it's loosen, weekend. and he doesn't see it because it's a g- 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 ghost, ghost propane tank. Doing it. And a uh, little ghost, Emily Browning, tries to warn them and then gets tackled by another ghost. Yeah, she's standing on the deck of the ghost ship looking down at the tugboat, which is slowly filling up with gas. And she tries to warn them not to start the boat. But before she can warn them, another ghost we don't Question see mark. who it is. Yeah. Just tackles, tackles her, her yeah. like fo- like football tackles this little girl. Mm-hmm. It's kind of great. And then the tugboat blows the fuck up. Yeah, it's a it big, does. pretty cool explosion. It, yeah, it's and pretty cool. uh Santos is lit on fire and you see him run and jump off the deck. Yeah. And then uh Isaiah Washington and one other one guy. One other person they get hurt. Yeah. I think um uh uh Gerald Byrne gets hurt. Really? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Julia, uh, a but good, the only one who good wife, is... good wife jumps off the off the ship because oh, she so is big. still on the ghost ship. Yeah, looking also looking down at the tugboat and she jumps off the side of this thing and she it takes honestly, so long. I kind of felt my stomach go into my yeah. throat a little bit because it's such a far drop. It's Even so if it far. looks kind of weird and fake, just the idea of just making that jump, you know, making that choice into this flaming wreckage too is. <laughs> is Ooh, it made me just kind of Yeah, they, they save Isaiah Washington and whoever else but Santos. Santos, is gone. RAP. He's a goner. Yeah. First kill on the kill count that's never gonna happen. Yeah. So then everyone's mad at, at Fairman, the new guy, because clearly he didn't do his homework and brought them to a haunted ship. And so they're all now stuck on the ghost ship, which sucks because they have no way of contacting anyone. It's just they're on a floating rust bucket. Yeah. Which sinking. is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um and so, yeah, they debate over, like, should we, like, Isaiah Washington just wants to build a raft and get out of there. You know what? Good plan. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know, dude. That sounds like life of pie shit to yeah, me. Yeah, but he lived. Yeah, but how many pies didn't? That, <laughs> oh, that no. didn't get their movie made about them because we never Cause found we never out about knew. them. Because they didn't survive. Mm. Think about that. Think about those poor tigers. Yeah. Uh, but everyone else is like, no, I don't know. We got this gold. We want to keep the gold. I just love how... 
far into this movie, the gold keeps being a priority still talk for everyone. Gold, yeah. It's kind of great. But they can't uh, fix the giant cruiser now that it's nighttime. They can't see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So they're like, let's just, just I camp guess, out. camp out on this boat. And we'll fix it in the morning. And then, yeah. So the, so the plan is to patch up the hole, drain the water out of it. And then just chill on this boat until they get rescued. Yeah, I think they're able to. Oh, and, and try to steer it too. They're going to try and steer it against the the current to get them to like to not hit the, to not those hit rocks, the rocks again yeah. on the next go around of the current. Yeah. So, and by the way, Greer is yelling at all of them. Greer is Isaiah Washington. Isaiah Washington is yelling at all of them because he he just wants to leave, and they're all still fixated on the gold to the point where, um. <laughs> Greer gets so pissed at everyone, he punches Carl Urban in the face and calls him a fucking bitch. He does do <laughs> it's that. It's really great. It's pretty funny. Grow up, asshole. Oh. Hey! Oh, fucking bitch. Get hey. fucking hey. talk. And, that, and this was the scene where I was like, oh, th- he, he was really good. good. Yeah, he does a great job. Yeah, but then the next time we see him, he's like sitting at an old piano chugging a bottle of wine. And I'm yeah. like, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Speaking of boat wine, Gabriel Burns losing it. He resorts to drinking boat booze, just weird, gross. Yeah, <laughs> ghost something ship brown booze. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Greer's also getting drunk off boat booze, and he's talking to two pictures now. He's talking to the picture of Francesca with the nice titties and Get of nice his titties. fiance. He has a picture of his fiance that who he's reportedly also. has nicer titties. Ni- to yeah, him. apparently nicer titties, As, according to him. Couldn't see much of them in the picture because it was mm-hmm. all folded up. It was very creased. Yeah. Probably from him feeling on those picture titties. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, yeah. The weird fucking scene between Carl Urban and uh, what's blonde, blonde guy's guy. name again? Dodge. What a Dodge. stupid name. Uh, they're sitting there in the kitchen daring each other to eat old baked beans because they're like, they're yeah. sealed. They're fine. And they start eating them, and they're like, this is actually really good. And they, it, we see them eat baked beans out of cans for a while. Yeah, it's there's an like extended a sequence scene. of them eating baked beans, but then the beans turn into maggots, Ew, they and they're eating, eating maggots. maggots. It's disgusting. I it's hate pretty it. fucking gross. It's so gross. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. Good wife goes, um, she sees the little girl, and... She like looks up her name she in the looks, directory. Yeah, she looks up the 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 like the ship's log of who all the people, the passengers were. Yeah, How did she find out that the little girl's name was Katie? Did she say it? She um no, because that's when she's looking at the the log. Yeah, but how would she know that Katie I don't know. was the girl? I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. She finds out where Ghost Girl uh, Emily Browning's room, room was and yep. goes and checks it out and finds. A little girl corpse hanging yep, there. Yep, it's a little girl skeleton, and there's a jump scare of the spooky skeleton. Yeah, and it's, and a, it's a little dress. It's a little girl hanging from a little noose on the ceiling. Mm-hmm. It's pretty <laughs> fucked it's up. pretty fucked up. She takes a locket off the corpse's neck, and she opens it, and there's w- who we presume is little girl's parents inside. And, and then... Uh, ghost Emily Browning shows up. Yeah, but she gives her whole backstory, and she's like, I'm not like... The other ghosts. I'm not like the other ghosts. Yeah, I'm not like other <laughs> ghosts. We don't really know who she's talking. Well, well, like what she's talking about. It's all very weird and cryptic. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo. And she. <laughs> this line. And so, oh my gosh, this is one of the greatest lines in this movie. Goodwife tries to give her the locket back, but it goes right through the ghost girl's hand. And she goes, "Wow, wow you, really you really are, are a, a fucking, fucking ghost. ghost." Oh God, you really are a fucking ghost. <laughs> to this little kid. <laughs> Top notch dialogue awesome. there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh Katie says they're all trapped there, even the ones who aren't marked, which we don't know what that means. And she's like, he needs all the souls he has to get and fill he his quota. He has to fill his quota so he can to ferry, ferry it. And it to- should, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, this is when we're taking a, a left yeah. turn to crazy I was like, listen, because- Emily Browning, we're like 50 minutes into this movie. You're throwing a lot of it's shit at us. It's a lot all of a sudden. Yeah. I was I was happy watching the, ska- uh, the salvaging crew repair boat holes and now you're talking about some kind of soul fairy yeah what and then she's like he doesn't like me talking to you and i have no idea what's happening at this point because the walls and the ceilings start getting all gross looking too it's all demony we learn about uh from gabriel byrne talking to the ghost captain this italian ghost captain who says 
the gold is from another ship called the Lorelei mm-hmm. that the the ship that they're on right now rescued two days before they disappeared. There was only one survivor from the Lorelei, and the ghost captain gives Gabriel Byrne a, a picture of the survivor. Survived, which we, we don't see. We don't see it, but Gabriel Byrne freaks, freaks out. out. And like, I don't know. I kind of like what ends up happening with this, but it's a lot of info just dumped on our laps. It's so much. They could have made it movie. so much simpler. They could, or they could have fed this out to us a little bit. Yeah, piecemeal throughout the movie. Because there's a lot of mythos to the ghost ship that is all just dumped on you. Yeah, in and a like, bunch and, of exposition. And then yeah, scenes. talking about another ship that we never see. The Lorelei, and yeah. that's where the gold came from. It's insane. And then also, dude. so all these scenes, the scene with with Katie and the locket and the scene with the captain, that's all going on at the same time as this other scene with Greer where he's in the ballroom of the ship and there's some really weird CGI yeah. where he's in the middle of the ballroom and it starts, it's almost like a reverse time lapse of the mm-hmm. room coming back it together like- and there's people in it the, like de decomposes. Yeah, it like it's like Beauty and the Beast when the curse gets yeah, lifted yeah. and all the people come back and stuff. And Francesca and her titties are there. Mm-hmm. And Greer, he's like, can't cheat on my fiance with a dead woman. You know I know this ain't real. Fuck it. Exactly. Dicks Fair out point. for Francesca. It's like ba- it's like VR, baby. It's <laughs> not real. And then uh, we see her ghost titties. I didn't expect to see titties in this movie. Do we see her titties? Mm -hmm. They are, I mean, he's talking them up. We better get to see them. I guess it's, yeah, uh, Chekhov's titties. Yeah. You talk them up that much. Yep. She derobes. You can get a little booty in there. I love, too, that he's able to kiss her and dance with her and touch her, and it's all fine. But then, so she's like, she's like beckoning him and she just has the top of her dress down with her boobs out and is like, come like, follow me. And she's standing in front of this kind of doorway and he leans in to just like honk, honk on her titties <laughs> and then just falls right through her and down an elevator <laughs> shaft. Yeah. And then she like, as she turns away, she what? Turns she into turns like an- She turns into a, like a corpse. It's like the it's Shining. It's like the Shining. Yeah, where she's all gross and old. And cool that never happens again in this movie it doesn't no like a ghost changing their form to like yeah i mean in in uh when okay let me see no because uh, there's like shape shifting like there's a lot oh, there's God. a lot going on in this and like no there's also shape shifting in this other scene it's after the captain or after gabriel Byrne learns about this other boat he like goes looking for the crew and he runs into ghost santos who, because he died, oh, and that's he's right. like, I'm stuck here now forever. And he looks and like. He's marked. Yeah, he's whatever marked the fuck now. That whatever means. that. I still don't really know what that means, having seen this whole movie. <laughs> he looks like one of the. Um, the pirates in the I think the second Pirates of the Caribbean, like like fucking what's his face's crew. Davy Jones. Yeah, where they're all like, like barnacly. barnacly. Yeah, that's what Santos. You know what? I didn't like. really like Santos's makeup. Uh, oh, yeah. I felt like it was it was obvious makeup. Like I I could oh, see okay. where it ended because oh, he has like burnt makeup bummer. on him from yeah. the explosion from the tugboat, and I was like, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never supposed to see these in HD. The so they the, the morning comes and they fix the boat. Oh, but sorry, it, Santos oh. morphs. Go Santos morphs into Epps and like morphs back into. It's really weird and I don't understand why. Oh yeah, no 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 no. Uh uh. So, Z- or Ghost Santos is there taunting Gabriel Byrne, mm-hmm. but then Ghost Santos goes away and Good Wife shows up, but then uh Gabriel Byrne thinks that she is ghost Santos, even though it's actually her. And so that's why Gabriel Byrne starts attacking her. And we see it from her perspective where she's like, no, stop attacking me. And then we see it from his perspective where he's fighting Santos. There was an actual shape shifting. No. That's what happens when I look down for a second to take It was weird. I mean, it was, it's, the the problem (laughs) is that none of these powers are well defined or uh, explored consistently. Cause yeah, cause she, we are dealing with ghost Santos and then she shows up and there is a bit of a morph, but it's like from Gabriel Burns' perspective. I see. Okay, it's so dumb. it's not actual. 
Got it. Got yeah. It. But yeah, he he attacks her yeah. uh, and almost kills her. And she's saved by a new guy who knocks by him out. Fairman. So then they they put him in the empty aquarium that is on the ship. Sure. They lock him up in this, it, which I don't know if they had aquariums that looked like this in the 50s. It looks, like the, the big, it looks like the one at Rainforest. Every Rainforest Cafe, I feel like, has the big round aquarium. When it you looks first like the in. alien containment unit in Subnautica. Yeah. Oh, or I was, in your think, base. I was thinking alien encounter that... Um, ride slash attraction that used to be at disney world oh, but it yeah. got removed because it was too scary sure <laughs> that is a that's one of my time machine options where if time <laughs> if time travel was real i would go back and ride alien encounter you know as a theme park enthusiast that's like a, really just wouldn't kill hitler that's cool jails that's <laughs> real cool so yeah let's just uh we can let all the family members know Oh, okay. And he wouldn't kill Hitler. Why did you have to? Why did you have to bring it down like this? <laughs> this episode, just having fun talking about alien encounter. So, uh, all roads lead to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> um. So now, yeah, Gabriel Burns locked up. They don't know where Isaiah Washington is. No. But morning comes. They fix this boat. I like the scene of them fixing the I boat. I like it too. Patching it up, pumping it out. Yep. Cool. They're all still talking about how they're going to be zillionaires. That word is used. They do. Even say though there's been casualties. and it, They it, only know of one. That's true. Santos. Because they don't know where Greer is, but they find him right after this Yeah. Scene. Good wife finds Good him wife right finds after him. this. He's like impaled on some equipment Rebar, on the elevator. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. The thing that I always forget is a thing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's it's a pretty cool yeah. death discovery. Katie's and then, there. Yeah, and Emily Browning. She says, I want to show you something, and this is some... Oh, is this when it happens? And I've been playing, by the way, Skyrim, and then I'm, I'm playing right now Elder Scrolls Online. This is some Elder Scrolls um, quest line bullshit where a character's like, I need to explain something to you. And then for some bullshit reason, they're able to try like time travel you back to when events happen so that you can watch them so instead yeah. of them just explaining everything to you so this is like a fucking elder scroll this is that's she flashes what this her is back. this is uh <laughs> where we get the explanation as to what happened in that opening scene of the movie thank yes and, and it they is do it wild it is this is fucking insane uh-huh. there's like time remapping yes where like things slow are down, slow and then go qu- fast up. and then yeah think the of music every... is insane it, i feel like that technique is so often used for parties and movies yes it's so absolutely it's, it'll be like people dancing and it slows down and they're dancing slow and yeah speed like happy up. death day it goes through the yeah, party yeah, yeah, yeah. and it like speeds up slows down speeds up to get to another yeah. part of the room slows down but with this it's people being slaughtered yeah this is and yeah <laughs> between that and the music it's a very weird tone i'm kind of people into being it. like mass murder but i kind of liked it i don't know i thought and it was it lo- such and a like weird the lighting choice. is so weird yeah it's fucking weird but man but this, yeah we see what happens so yeah. the the wire cut all those people on the dance floor and then everyone people, else food just being poisoned murdered. yeah food got poisoned um people are just having their throats slit and being shot like it, it's pretty intense the the pool <laughs> was in fact a mass grave where people were lined up at the edge and, they and then just shot, shot and they all fall into the pool yeah which is it's real really fucked up bleak. that's evocative right there yeah and also doesn't make sense in my opinion that the bullet holes were in the side of the pool I, yeah like down there because they were shooting people who were standing at the edge of the pool yeah the bullets wouldn't have gone like down at that angle that's whatever. whatever it's fucking ghost there's shit. something about um scenes like that in horror movies where and weirdly around this time 2002 this wouldn't have been i don't think as yeah like you said evocative or as uh, like something about it i think just because gun violence is so prevalent and that image of people like being mass murdered by guns is like too real so for some reason imagery like that i'm always like oh god like it's yeah so i don't stark. like it it's not fun yeah cause, it's, i mean it's, it's it's like you know it's holocaust shit yeah it's, like, or i think of like shit. anders breivik or whatever that guy who who in norway was it oh norway yeah or, oh yeah that like democratic socialist camp where he like went and murdered a bunch of people. That's like I just right. think of shit like you know I mean or any mass fucking shooting. There's a bajillion of them. But, yeah, like, but there's something about like the something lining about people the use of and the... guns and stuff like that in horror. I'm like, this is too real. That's, you know, that's why Belko is hard to watch sometimes. Oh yeah. But I mean, 
I yeah. guess it. I guess it's horror. But then you it's, think you're like to be back in 2002, we would have had Columbine, and that's you know. Yeah, but that was back when that was still shocking. I know that's what I mean. Is oh. like this wouldn't have been so commonplace. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh, it's it's gross. It's messed up. Yeah. It's but then yeah. Fun. So like the, the and I don't know who is orchestrating this attack. That's it, the thing. They're dressed like crew members. Yeah. But they're also killing crew members and then like because there's this one dude who has a very distinct look is he the one serving champagne he, yeah and so he's I like thought, he's looking around all shifty but then we but don't then, really see him well no you do see him because he's part of the people gunning people down at the pool scene and then he gets shot That's in, right. in the pool so it's like oh i thought he was the maybe the mastermind but he just got killed by the people killing them it's like that fucking neil sisterica ultimate showdown do you know, you know what i'm talking about like this is oh the yeah ulti- of course it literally I know, I know all those is words. that but it's all these crew members and like you think that they're the then someone kills them and then yeah. someone kills those people and then someone kills those and so people. so yeah it's it like gets down to a group stop. of dudes and they're like they have the gold and it's like okay it's all over the gold and then uh they're uh, most of them are going into a room with the gold but one of them's hanging back and francesca the singer walks yeah, up she to this kills one all dude so you're like, oh. no, no no she walks up to this one dude and they kiss and this one dude turns around and shoots all the other guys so it's like the one dude and francesca yeah and then she shoots him in the head yeah and you're like oh so she's so the mastermind she did it. but then the door opens and a, a silhouetted <laughs> man walks out and kills her with a weird it's pretty wild it's like a, a, it's hook a hook swings down from the ceiling but there's no no indication of how he made that hook fall down because he's like embracing yeah, her you're right. and then he turns her and puts her in position <laughs> yeah s- takes one step back and then this hook falls yeah and it's like he's not That's a ghost yet shit. it's it's so dumb but then the big thing also francesca's death pretty graphic yeah that hook goes like through it's her head nasty. and then she's lifted up but you realize that the dude who did that to her and the apparent last survivor of this is in fact New guy. New guy. It's Fairman. Oh, and by the way, Katie, we see her death in this montage. Oh, you do We see- realize that she's... This is, like, fucked up. I'm glad they didn't show it, at least. Yeah, because they- when, when they found her corpse hanging in a room, I was like, oh, she killed herself. She killed herself. herself because she was the only person alive. Yeah, and- but no. She survived the dance uh, floor slaughter only to get run down by she yeah she's dudes? dragged away by a bunch of those guys who are in on it and then taken into her room and they hang her yeah we don't see it we just see her being shoved into the room but i was like ew what yeah the fuck yeah so you it's see nasty. her yeah I, I thought up. she killed herself too mm-hmm. after realizing i'm just gonna either starve and go crazy that, out yeah. here or that's what i thought she was the only one on the boat and was like fuck it i'll hang myself yeah no she was murdered also, either either way, it's like that's bleak as fuck. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, this this is the scene where, where no like, more kill count. Yeah, but it's also like this is when we get the like thievery corporation music playing. <laughs> yeah, <over. laughs> yeah. What the fuck, dude? It's then the new guy. Ferriman, in the flashback, we see him marking Francesca's hand right. again. I still don't really know what that means. Well, later we find out that like he can mark everyone except for uh, Katie, Katie, because she was too young and innocent. Yeah, you can only mark people who, who are have not sinned. who have sinned. Yeah, it's a very it begins. But it mean but but marking someone means you have control over their souls. So if he doesn't have control over Katie's soul, why is she stuck on the ship? I don't know. That's what I that's what I know. mean. Is it doesn't make any sense? Th- these yeah, there there, there are no th- rules. There doesn't to this need movie. the marking thing to, did not need to be part of the script. No, it didn't. No, you could it can just be. It. I'm uh collect collecting souls. I'm collecting souls. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get that we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, yeah. There's right? oh my god, there's so much happening right now. This is what I mean. This is what I mean when I say I have no fucking clue what So happened. now Good Wife knows that new guy is a bad guy and that he was there on the ship in sixty two because she saw in the vision him kill yeah. uh Francesca. Yeah. So she runs to try to free Gabriel Byrne from his aquarium yeah. entrapment. He's dead. He's dead. It's filled with water. He's floating in water. And then the picture that he got from the ghost he's captain. He's holding it. Yeah, he's holding <laughs> it. It slams up against the uh, mm-hmm. glass, and it's the new guy. So the new guy was the sole survivor from the Lorelei ship. And he was the grand orchestrator of this whole thing. Yeah. This whole crazy You know heist. what? A minute ago, I said 
he's not undead yet when that shit was going down. He might have been since he, they took him from the Lorelei. I'm assuming he had orchestrated that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. I guess he's a demon. He's he's just a demon. Yeah. Okay. Because his name is Ferriman. Yeah. That was the he's other thing that I realized. His name is Ferriman. Yeah. Fairy man. He is ferrying souls. He's yeah. the man ferrying souls to management. To as management he says, and no later. further elaboration, which I kind of, I'm kind sure, of into. I don't need a whole backstory. I think it's kind of fun to just have a cryptic, like who the fuck is management? It's clearly what is, the devil. Yeah. Because this, like when he gives this explanation, it is like, oh, we are straight up in like Christian mythology now, uh-huh. you know, faring souls. But as I said, it would or be much like Greek mythology. I was oh, yeah. thinking like yeah, Hades be that too. And, you know. But I think the better version is that management is Freddy Krueger. Yes. Yeah. I, I like souls. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go out, new guy. Yeah. Prove yourself. Uh-huh. Secret Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I Wouldn't that be great? Yes. Um, <laughs> so Carl Urban. Who's still alive Yeah. So, so, okay. So, so good wife leaves new guy with blonde guy. Yeah. And basically, she tells, she's like, hey. She indicated to blonde guy that new guy's bad. Yeah. But then new guy showed up and she had to play it cool. So yeah. she was like, here, blonde guy, Keep take this, this gun. gun he, and you- I insist. No, really, <laughs> yeah. I insist. Hang on to this gun. Not and, you, new guy. Yeah. Blonde guy, you hang on but to this gun. But you two stick together and keep an eye on each other. Yeah, okay. So then she runs to find Carl Urban, but she finds him dead. He's been crushed between, like, gears. Oh, yeah, that was cool. That was gross. I don't know how it happened, but it, it was cool. His <laughs> body got crushed to shit. Yeah, it did. And, like, his mangled-ass face is down yeah. there. She sees and it. and then new guy... Uh, oh, wait. Nope, blonde guy comes running into the room where, where good wife is without Ferriman. Well, Because he, 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 he shot shoots him. him. He shoots Ferriman. Yeah, we see blonde guy shoot Ferriman. But then we see Ferriman's eyes open. He's not dead. It's a real dumb scare. It's dumb? Because you... Yeah. Because you know. Because you know and just the music cue is yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. big. But, okay, so we know he survives being shot and then the blonde guy. So that's when blonde guy makes a run for it and runs over to good wife and is like, hey, I shot Fairman. Let's go. We can we can leave and take this gold and make a new life together. And he gets all weird. And then good wife is, is, says no. By the way, why didn't you ask where Carl Urban was when you came in here? Because you knew I was looking for him, and that's when gotcha. Blonde guy is Ferriman. Face morph he, into Ferriman. So oh much yeah, face we do morphing. have more shape. There's more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because he face morphs into Ferriman. Is like, I he, would have gotten away <laughs> with it if it wasn't for Carl Urban. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when he explains that he's a soul collector. Yeah. I don't know. It's a lot. We gave, yep, we explained it all. Marks the souls, whatever the fuck. Yeah. She shoots a uh, gas tank, an explosive. She, she explodes the She explodes butt. the ship. It, it's a pretty good explosion. Yeah. We see Fairman getting blown towards the camera. Oh, He's no, all, he gets blown to pieces. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, the explosion throws a piece, like a big piece of piping or something that goes through his body. Oh, that's pretty and good. And bursts it apart like that guy in Bride of Chucky who gets hit by the uh-huh. semi, whose just body <laughs> instantly breaks into the pieces upon impact yeah yeah yeah. it's pretty good <laughs> and then the boat's sinking and it's sinking and then the aurora borealis is happening because fuck it it's very oh beautiful. and then all the souls all the souls swim out. leave the boat and oh, they're like, flying up around the boat it's like the fucking end of the little mermaid <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> or they turn from the seaweed things into the mermaids mm-hmm. yeah oh my <laughs> it's god fucking insane and she, she's like uh she floats off with this this thing of gold which wait she gets gold i thought she i don't know i think the whole moral is the morals always leave the gold behind but all the gold we see them loading the gold into that truck at the end yeah but that was because of ghost stuff i don't know whatever guys whatever yeah she gets picked up by a passing boat they're put in an ambulance and then she sees new guy and there's a crazy metal screen yeah oh my god yeah it's she like she looks up from the ambulance and it's a bunch of people dressed like the crew members from that from the boat and then there's new guy and he looks at the camera and then you just hear wow <laughs> <laughs> And then smash the credits. It's it's over. Pretty crazy. Fucking ghost ship. I do love 2000s horror for having so many metal <laughs> pin drops, you know? Sure. Needle drops. Or needle drops, rather. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. 
whatever. I like Mudvayne. It, it, I, w- I would hate it if it was a, a good movie and then that ruined it. But it's fun when it's a bad movie and that's just a little like just a little extra. That's fair. It's like a little a little seasoning on top. Yeah. So yeah, this movie's a mess. <laughs> it really is. I it, liked the boat stuff and then it just lost control of itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fine if you're if if you like this and you're nostalgic for it i get being nostalgic for there's some good stuff the it's the gore is good oh yeah it's great and a lot I of good gore think it probably has to do with the fact that this guy is primarily an effects person mm-hmm. who made this um so whatever man yeah I don't, i'm not gonna go on a crusade against it no this is not one where i'm angry at it existing <laughs> it's just dumb. yeah 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 it's not fucking wicker man right right right, right yeah yeah uh. like this was yeah it's fun I don't know. Did you feel um, like embarrassed for any cast watching it? Because sometimes I'm like, oh, you're no, they they you know I... they got a paycheck. They did their best. Yeah, like I think that's fair. Yeah, the writing's not the best. They did what they could with it. Yeah, like writing yeah, aside, yeah, no, everyone's good in yeah, this. Yeah, no complaints about any performances, whatever. Except yeah. for I guess you know I I called out Isaiah Washington drinking a bottle yeah, of wine, but, but oh, man, that scene is how bad. do you play that without being a cliche? Yeah. Well, so yeah, that's Ghost Ship. That's Ghost Ship. 2002, I, I and it feels like it. it. <laughs> yeah, that that helps too. Is I, you know, that was our we came of age in those mm-hmm. them early 2000s. I get a little nostalgic for them, even if they were like just objectively bad years for pop culture. <laughs> yeah. you know, not all all pop culture, but like definitely horror. Yeah, and just a lot of other shit. Yeah. Cool. Go ship. Go ship. You can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at, oh, what well, were I was you gonna, gonna say? I also mentioned the subreddit. Oh, yeah. It's a real cool place to be. And my Twitch, Dead Meat James, and there's a Discord. Yep. I'm at Carebeck, C R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, Um, I'm probably gonna have, I guess, depending. There's gonna be new pins in the store. I like just designed a new one, so those might be up. I'm not sure, but like check out the store. Also, we're on another podcast called uh, uh, D- Dinner and Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah, and you should go listen to that. Yeah, I like to no, that. that's not like us. We didn't like guest on other podcasts. No, no, no. We like, are... we're literally on it every week. Yeah, <laughs> like there, it's are, our, there yeah. is. If you want to hear more of our voices, there are hours and hours. If you want to go catch up with us playing D and D for how long have we been? Uh, we're it. coming up on two years of recording. Two years. I know. Isn't that crazy? You want to listen to two years of, of our D&D campaign. Yeah, it's, please do. It's a really good it's product. Really, yeah, it's, it's really, really funny. Well made, and I love it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. with all our best friends. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's like, it's such a change of pace from this too, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Like it's, it's totally different mm-hmm. vibe. Go listen to that. Um, Yeah. Uh, That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, until next week, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast.